stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public comment. Hey, Jackie. Anybody else? Uh, just one little one. Just wondering, maybe during your statement or something, this reason why the building committee uh, for the town hall is the priority over the building committee for the fire. I know eventually both, but why the town hall before the fire? I'll, I'll address that. Thank you. I have something. Please. Go ahead. I am, for the record, I'm Laura Lefko. I'm the Killingworth Republican Town Committee Chairman. I've received an email from Phil Stull rescinding his offer to serve on the Traffic Commission. First Selectman Gorski has copies of that email. You can draw your own conclusions as to his reasons. All I will say is that the behaviors exhibited by our town officials do not make anyone want to volunteer their time to help. Mr. Stull suggested a non-town employee be the moderator of the town meeting last week, not to belittle or insult anyone, but to avoid the impression of improprieties. So that was immediately voted down. We feel that Elizabeth does not have strong enough control of the room and that she does not have a strong enough command of Robert's rules at this time to lead what have become contentious meetings. We will be closely examining how, when, and how often selectmen can speak at town meetings, and we'll do a deep dive into Robert's Rules of Order. I would suggest that someone be appointed to take a course, read a book, and attend meetings in other towns to become better familiarized with this process. Ms. Young and Mr. Anino, at the town meeting last week, you spoke repeatedly in support of or against issues, in my opinion, abusing your, your positions in the front of the room, and every time you spoke, it sounded like a campaign speech. You helped to sell the residents of Beechwood something that will not help them and open the town up to the possibility of unnecessary legal fees to help one group of residents and, in my opinion, use them for their votes. We have seen this time and time again from the two selectmen, from the gun proclamation which Ms. Young pushed on the Board of Selectmen at the last minute, causing the need for a special meeting, and promised the Shoreline League of Women Voters, and we have copies of those emails. And then neither of you showed up at the special meeting to vote on issuing it, letting it fail, and leaving all the supporters of it dangling on the call. And both Ms. Young and Ms. Anino, Mr. I'm sorry, Ms. Young and Mr. Anino spoke against the proclamation for Vista's Life's graduating residents because there were no Killingworth residents graduating and then abstain from voting, letting that fail without having the conviction and the courage to vote no. I constantly hear the nonsense that our town government votes in a nonpartisan way. That is the biggest lie perpetrated on this town. And there are many, at least lies of omissions, that our residents are being told. Young and Anino have voted against, in my estimation, 95% of everything Mrs. Gorski has tried to do since taking office. The only nonpartisan votes that take place on this Board of Selectmen or on any Killingworth Board of Commission take place when Republicans happen to agree with the Democrat majority. I, for one, got involved in town politics as a direct result of this behavior from the prior administration and their party in Killingworth. I am tired of the questionable, questionable and almost pathological need for control at any cost that we see from your party in Killingworth, and at least by extension from the two of you. I'm tired of seeing the pandering that goes on at these town meetings, and I am tired of the way residents who do not feel the way you do are treated. Earlier this year, Mr. Couture, a Board of Finance member at a town budget meeting, sat at the head table, laughing at and mocking residents making comments along with another Board of Finance member, and then yelled at a resident and wagged his finger at them when they objected to his actions. We have that on video. Ms. Young, you have publicly insulted Republican Party nominees to boards and commissions more than once, David Cotillo, for example. You have told residents of our party, namely David Long last December, that you would get back to him about his concerns and then to date at least have not. You constantly interrupt others when they are speaking and get very annoyed if anyone does the same to you. Your behavior is not professional or appropriate. Mr. Young and Ms. Mr. Anino and Ms. Young, you routinely come to Board of Selectmen meetings unprepared, without knowledge of the issues, and without having reviewed the documents that are provided to you by our first selectmen. Beachwood septic, Beachwood septic is one issue that comes to mind. 
The Vista Life Proclamation is another, and the Pickleball Courts are another, to name three. In contrast, it was routine for our previous first selectman to forget to provide Ms. Blewett with documents for review until just minutes to hours before a Board of Selectmen meeting, and Mr. Nino never objected to that or moved to have those issues tabled until Mrs. Blewett could have enough time to review those documents. Killingworth suffers from this type of behavior, not the Republican or Democrat parties or town committees. We have our jobs to do. Your job is to work together with our first selectmen in the best interest of all residents of that town. If you do that, winning elections should be easy for all of you. Thank you. Any other public comment? All right, I'm gonna move on. Uh, approval of minutes. I move to approve the minutes of the Monday, September 12th, 2022, regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen. I'll second it. Uh, any discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, refunds and abatements. I move to approve the following refunds and abatements. Let me just double check. All for overpayment <laughs> <laughs> and allow them to follow their normal course. I second it. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, appointments. I move to appoint Michael J. Parahus R. to the Economic Recovery Committee for a term ending December 31st, 2022. Do I have a second? Second. A discussion just to, uh, just so you're aware, Michael is replacing Sarah O'Brien who resigned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Um, I move to appoint Michael G. Reimers D to the Traffic Safety Committee for a term ending December 31st, 2022. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, aye. I move to appoint Catherine E. Murphy D to the Traffic Safety Committee for a term ending December 31st, 2022. Do I have a second? I'm sorry, who, who did you move? Catherine E. Murphy. Murphy. I'll second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, I move to appoint Walter J. Adamitz R to the Traffic Safety Committee for a term ending December 31st, 2022. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, I, um, I move to appoint Benjamin Elliott Schofield R to the Traffic Safety Committee for a term ending December 31st, 2022. Do I have a second? I'll second. Um, for discussion, Ben Schofield does fulfill our firefighter. Okay. okay. So that was the rationale behind okay. that. Uh, and lastly, we still have one open position. Um, I'm reaching out, there was a, a U that was interested, uh, a young father who was interested in being on the Traffic Safety Committee. I haven't heard back from them. But anyways, um, all those in favor of Benjamin Elliott Schofield say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, moving on. From a department report, I know we've been concerned about pump outs. And here's the pump out reports. Um, these are the full blown reports. What I tried to do is summarize it in this particular document. In speaking with Robin, you know, some of these go back to 1949. But part of the problem is getting a hold of the documentation to manage some of these. Um, now, from 2017, we have about 44 left. Um, you see that it gets better as we get into the, the current years. But nonetheless, um, this is a work in progress. And we have some, we definitely have some typos. There's one that's due in 21, 25. So clearly we have a, so I'm an issue. I'm assuming this is the list of all of the... That's the list of all of them. This is what I try to do to sum up. To summarize the ones that are due. What, what, what I'm sensitive, and, and thank you for doing this, but I, I, I think I'm, I'm asking for a bit more. Not, not so much in terms of data, more in terms of process. And, and, and what I'm simply looking for is to make sure that if Robin is uh, the person that's you know, keeping inventory of who's pumped out and who's not, that there is, and I think it's this board, has some oversight 
And so I'm looking for some means to routinely um, report out on, 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 on what that is, or the status of it. I do know she sends out letters to everyone who's due. Um, so that, that happens on a routine basis as time permits in her schedule. She'll go ahead and send that out. Um, the challenge she runs into is sometimes she'll get feedback from residents, sometimes she'll get feedback from the people who actually do the pump outs mm -hmm. uh, and then try to clean that up. But I understand what you're looking for, just to make sure that we're trying to close this out. And if there's any specific issues, I mean, if there's some wells here or some septic systems that need to be pumped out and aren't getting done, What's the, how do we follow up, particularly right. as we're the Water Pollution right. Control Authority. So, yeah, I'll, I'll start that out with Robin. All right. I think what we do need is a formal process. I was going to say that somehow this should be codified. codified yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know your word. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so something to codify it so that it's, it's a formal process going forward. Yeah. Um, but that's where we stand. Okay. Um, budget reports, um, Gina and I have started to reach out to make sure the fiscal year 22-23 capital projects are underway. Um, there's a number of them for the fire department, um, certainly for highway. We're just trying to get a handle on where those stand and moving forward. Um, I know we did speak with Jim Duffield about the ball field and particularly the, um, the 500K that he has there. He's aware of it. He's looking for some assistance moving forward to figure out how to fill out the paperwork. And secondly, if he needs anyone to project manage that, if they're going to go forward with the building of the, the um, ball fields. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we stand on that. We'll have more information probably at our next meeting. Okay. Can I go back to department reports? Sure. Um, I just wanted to let you know that um, the Regional Water Authority, they're about 30% done with weak screening. They're thinning out two areas in Hammonasset. It's a standard thing. It was out for bid during COVID. And there, I just received a report, I think last week, they were about 30% done. Um, and there'll be an increase in security over the coming year at all the, recrea all the recreational mm -hmm. trails, at all the water authorities. We'll see some changes in recreation um, security. Just let you know. What, what, what is, did you say, leaf screening? Leaf screening, so they thin out, they have to thin out certain types of trees periodically mm -hmm. so that they get, um, so they bring in foresters and actually have contracts that um, they go through and thin out the trees because if you have too much detritus, the leaves that come down, gets into the water supply and affects the nitrogen level in the water supply. Mm -hmm. So, and um, have an asset supplies, it's one of the major sources for, you know, there's a big two. So they have to, you have to keep it thinned out and you have certain types of trees and you mm -hmm. try to keep, mm -hmm. um, so it's not the same type of tree everywhere. So they thin it out so you have different age trees. And it makes it less likely to burn. I know we've had some challenges too. There's been some security issues on the trail between Parmalee um, going behind Beechwood. So we've had the resident state trooper okay. taking a look at that. Um, a particular individual was walking back in the fields and was using beech wood to shower and then moving on. So, people were. We what is the pool? Is there an outdoor shower? There's there? an outdoor shower in the uh, pool. So, we had so. the resident state trooper doing some additional patrols back there. But I could see even the, the trails back behind the reservoir. I used to walk them all the time. But you're out there and you're by yourself. Yeah. So. Um, Gina, anything else on a budgetary report? Once you stop talking about capitalism, I stepped away. Mm -hmm. I know. Okay. Just trying to sort of chase down the capitals. All right, moving on to new business, um, KBFC medical supplies. Um, so we did receive a national opioid settlement um, and until um, Youth and Family Services gets their prevention coordination stood up, I thought it prudent to reach out to the fire department to see what additional medical supplies they could use to address their calls as they go out. 
Um, and I did receive that list, uh, and it's included in your packet. So, um, I move to approve the KVFC supply list and from, from the National Opioid Settlement received by the town. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Um, just a question. If, if, if we were not to allocate those monies for this, wouldn't this be part of their normal operating budget? It would, but the Narcan is the stuff that really starts adding up for them. But, but again, I mean, that's, that's an important supply drive right. to have, and I'm just, I just want to be careful that we recognize that. I mean, it, it's, it's found money, so it's we may a, as well yeah. take advantage of it, but it's something that we need to make sure that we cover as part of a budget item in right. outgoing years. They do cover this, typically, mm -hmm. because this national opioid settlement came up. It was an opportune time for us to use that funding. Yep. So, all those in favor say aye. I have one more question. Is there a shelf life on Narcan? There is. Um, and that's why it's something that, I'm not sure what it is, but it, there is a shelf life on it. So, this, they felt, was a reasonable quantity based on their discussions amongst themselves. The only thought, the only thing they did say that maybe a stretch was the strawberry glucose, glucose gel, but put it in there. It's only $20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what they said. It, that may be a stretch. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye, aye. All right old business. All right, the KB, or excuse me, the Killingworth Historical Society lease. This is the updated draft that Dave sent. I've also sent this out to, to Ken Wodach for his review. Dave's recommend, recommendation is to keep the format similar to previous leases, and I know it's pretty antiquated stuff. Um, molestation aside um, <laughs> but add a term and add a term in this case perpetual a nominal price and a more defined description of the precise area I think we have all of that taken into account Dave would prefer it to be I believe he's got in here 99, 99. years yeah, with, a, a, an, a, with an extension of 50 Third paragraph. Yeah, um, but Ken still would like it to be in perpetuity, so we're still going back and forth. We have time, they're not ready. The barn probably won't be done until the end of October, so it's worth Ken coming back with his comments. If you have comments, let me know and we can send them off to Dave as well. We have another lease, just FYI, coming up, and that's going to be for the Valley Shore Lease Communications, mm -hmm. um, but one lease at a time. <laughs> <laughs> that's a standard lease to give to all the towns, though, right? That's it is. That's not one that we did craft. That's crafted by them. It's Valley crafted Shore. by them, but it's going to be changing the footprint at that location. All right. Are they, they're the owners of that? Right, they have Correct. a land lease from us, and they do they do they have sub tenants on that town? They do, yeah. and they but they provide they do provide some dollars back to the town yeah. for using that property to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're going to right now. They're working on adding another tenant. I think Verizon is planning on updating, so there's going to be more dollars coming in. All right, I'm going to move on to the town office building committee. Um, I move to charge a town office building committee with the following. I recommend a design for the construction of a new town hall addition to replace the existing modulars. Project the cost of the new town hall addition and provide general oversight to the future construction of the town hall addition. Can I have a second? I'll second. Go ahead. All right, now we can go with the discussion. 
Um, I know we went back and forth. We're trying to make sure that this is limited to the modulars. Uh, we're not trying to um, make any other changes to town hall per se. Although there's been some requests to add sound grouping <laughs> in certain locations. <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> Nancy, where, where is that? It's right behind my lease. That's your applications. Oh, I didn't see the motion. I just saw the. No, that is for the next item. But you didn't have the motion in here. Yeah, I did. I just Sorry. put it in my notes. Oh, I thought they had notes. Sorry. You good? Um, you know, I, I, since the last meeting, I've been given this an awful lot of thought, um, and, and I'm wondering whether this, this even requires us to establish a committee. And it just, it seems to me that there were several studies done, these were put before the taxpayers, the taxpayers said no, and, and that's clear and that's a matter of record. And so where we are now is basically making a decision to replace in kind what we have, not literally in kind, but you know, we've got a building department and a copy room and the selectman's office. Mm -hmm. And and I, I'm just wondering whether it wouldn't make more sense for this to be managed by the Board of Selectmen because the scope is clear. I, I, I don't know why we don't hire an architect and have them put together a scope of work, bid the work out and get it built. Well, the other thing we could do is put it out to RFP. Um, and do like a design build? Correct. We could do that too. We could do that. We would have to do some upfront work in terms of defining what we have, but it's pretty straightforward. Well, a town office building committee, um, there's people that are out there that would be interested in, in helping and participating, so the people's voices would be heard as a council. Well, some I, people's I, I, voices I understand that, but what I'm concerned about is, is that this isn't, it could be, I mean, we could say, you know, go back out and revisit this thing, but I, I believe that the taxpayers have spoken, and so our direction is clear. Um, so to introduce a committee, I mean, maybe we want the committee to validate that this is the right thing to do. I, I, I don't know. I just, I don't want, I, I'm concerned about going back and doing, you know, the analysis paralysis exercise mm. when we've already been told no new you know, no new building, you got what you got, maintain it. And so... So how do we move forward then on that? So do we, do we pause, do we table this, go out to RFP for design and build, and then after that information comes back, have a town office building committee established to just review that with the, with the input of the Board of Selectmen? The, the people that are going to be most, <coughs> have the most input are the people that live in this building. Yeah. You know, so it's going to be a discussion with Robin and, and the building department and, and, and certainly Gina and Elizabeth to figure out what makes sense for this building. Uh, we're not looking for something, for example, in 2013 when we went out it was also going to be meeting space and all of, yeah, I mean, we all went of that and did additional a needs, stuff. It was a, a needs assessment and, and um, you know, they came up with some fairly grand plans. But all, And I forgot what the price tag was, but ultimately the taxpayer said no. Right. I mean, and, that was it. Yeah, that was, that was, and we're not trying, all we're trying to do is replace as much as possible. My thought process here is... We try to extend the size of this meeting space, make this a little bit bigger, maybe reduce the size of the office space, and then have some sort of common um, uh, filing area so that we don't, goodness knows, I don't need all the space I have in my office. You know, so some of those things, just re reset up the, the footprint of this. Um, but somebody, a, des a design construction firm, can come in and interview the people that live in this building and figure out and come up with some designs. 
Yeah, they could. I, and what I'm wondering is maybe, it, you know, you, you're the full-time employee here. Yeah. Maybe you have some some internal meetings with, with town hall staff and put together a basic scope of work that addresses those needs. You, you could talk about enlarging the, this space or shrinking that or whatever, and, and put that together as kind of a, I don't want to call it a wish list, but like a functional spec. And then I, I think that we could, we could then restructure this, this um, committee to, to be more direct about what we're asking them to do. And, and direct them to go out and solicit you know, design build proposals to meet these needs. Um, something along those lines. And it's, it, to me, it's, it's, it's going right to the, the, the point that I think the taxpayers have clearly told us we want to do. Well, and this will save some time. If we went to a design or analysis paralysis again, it could. I just, I, I, I would be concerned about setting the wrong expectation with establishing a committee unless we are very clear about what we're asking them to do. And that's why I'm saying, you know, either pull it all the way back and manage it from here, or, you know, it's always nice to have a little extra help, but I think we need to be much more specific about what we're asking them to do. We're asking them to replace these modulars to um, adopt these requests as the requirements for that space and maybe develop an RFP and, and, and solicit bids for the construction. And then do they end at that point or do they, I mean, I think um, when we first had these discussions last fall or maybe it was during, I can't remember, it's a while back, there was some discussion about the need for project management moving when construction changes happen. So does that committee, do you envision, either of you envision this group being involved in the project management as well or just there once the firm is selected? I, I don't, I mean, it's, it's a fairly simple project mm -hmm. and I would think between our building department and, and okay. you know, the staff in the building that it could be managed. You know, if you, if you start adding construction management onto it, you know, you're getting, you're going to pay for it, right. and it's less hard value that you get in whatever you're building. If we get a construction management firm come in, we're looking at a 30% over. No, no, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't meaning construction, I meant um, the role of the of the commission, or the group that we yeah. bring yeah. on, do they, does their role cease before construction? I think do, we could. Because we talked about, I think at the time, so I don't remember who brought it up, that there would be a need to oversee all that there, there transition. There might be, so but, but, I, but I think that we could decide that later as a result of whatever whatever proposals we get from... We could validate, yeah, after we get the proposals, we could put together a town office building committee to make sure that there's broad... Um, everyone gets to see, you know, we open up the kimono and say, here's what's going on under the hood if you will, to make sure that people, the people can take a look at it and say, okay, this makes sense. This mm -hmm. is what we're looking at. And they could formally validate, do we have, the, is the $2 million mark, is that mm -hmm. what we're looking at? Because <clears throat> I think that's where, what we need to go. Can I ask Richard's opinion? Of course you can. What do you think? I think it needs to be designed from the inside out, for sure. Yeah. I think it should look similar to what we already have. Um, it's cheaper to go up, so there's always the possibility of a second story for storage. Not necessarily elevator, it doesn't have to be accessible if it's not open to the public. Um, but I mean, in terms of, of the, the approach that I'm suggesting, do you think that that's I think if you get too many hands in the mix, it's gonna just get confusing. That's, right? that's kind of the way I see it. Because you're gonna get a lot of opinions, but nobody's gonna have anything to base it on. I look at it from a construction standpoint and from an egress, I already know what it should cost. You know, you should be between three and 350 a square foot. That's mm -hmm. it. That's what it should cost. It mm -hmm. could be stick framed, it could be engineered lumber. It's mm -hmm. not an expensive project to build. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, do you go down, pull foundation, take advantage, do you go up a second floor? You know, you gotta dig a hole. How much more does concrete cost to go down? It's cheap to add a second floor. Do you need the space? Those are just some of the things to look at. But beyond that, I think if you get 
too many people in there, it's just going to get confusing. So you know, they, they can't even figure out what color they want. Paint in a room, let alone. You mean outside, an outside commission? Because they're not even in here. Is that what you're suggesting too? You're suggesting? I, I don't know if, if, you, if you need a commission. Right. I mean, if we once you figure out what you want, you now you've got some free help to oversee it. But I do enough projects. But once you look at the print, you let them build. As long as it's built the way it's supposed to be built, there's not much to do at that point. But the staff is going to have the input on how it gets built. Yeah, the people they that, know what their needs are. Yeah. You know, Elizabeth doesn't have enough storage space in here. She's full. Um, we bought a few more file cabinets. Even if we go digital, you still have to save the paper. I just got a thing back from the state. No matter what I do, I can't throw that paper away. I can digitize it, but I can't get rid of it. It's for the life of the structure. So you got to store it somewhere. This basement is not the best place. We already found that out a couple of years ago. When we had a foot, a foot and a half of water down there from a broken pipe. Um, you know, there's some commercial aspects you have to keep in mind. It drives the numbers up a little bit, but it's not that bad. Well, you've got to deal with prevailing wage and all of the stuff that goes with that. But yeah. So, so I would suggest that we <coughs> table that this and that um, that we put together, you know, basic functional uh, scope and direct the um, you know whatever whatever organization or committee we decide to use be much more much more specific about what we're asking them to do well once we have the spec for them then they can control it from there mm -hmm. so I'm okay with that so how far do we get along we went as far as a second in discussion do I have what to withdraw the motion and then table it Elizabeth you can just not vote on it, I think. Okay, and let it die in the yeah. bag. And we'll just say it was approved. Okay, take both of them. All right, good discussion. I think that that was valuable. I just, uh, you know, I, I do want to see work happen on this. I think it's important. It's going to take a while to get things moving. So the sooner we have this idea in mind, the better. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, let's move on to the consultants' services to review public works. Um, we were given the honor and the privilege to move forward with this at town meeting, but I have two questions. Do we go forward and, and speak with uh, McMahon and Associates about this particular work, or do we try to send it out for bid one more time and see if we get any additional bites? Um, I think that could slow it down. Um, but could we potentially come in under 40? I don't know. As much as I'd like to see this work get done, this assessment get done, I, I, would, I would like to see it go back out to bid. Yeah, I just felt that getting only one bid was... I mean, let's just send this out one more time. Do you, want to, do you want to rework the specs at all? Well, the one thing that well, I would say um, maybe the roads and engineering, we could maybe pull that out because we do rely on our town engineer to do that work. Where are you referring? E. E. That was someone that's brought up during the meeting. Everybody agreed the roads were... English excellent, yeah. Yeah, but that's not that's not what this is supposed to be. So we've got buildings and grounds. <clears throat> no, okay, it's in B. It's in B. So it's there. So so roads and engineering, huh? yeah, I, I would tend to agree that that's not something that they mm -hmm. take care of it with the engineers. What is, what is the storm slash emergency management duties include FEMA submission for? That was just really so. Walt does the FEMA submissions so we can get um, reimbursement. I think storm emergency management. It, to me, this should be a little more in depth about what our highway department does. I, I would during, agree. I would scratch that too. Uh, you know, <laughs> we may, maybe when it comes up to 
highway maintenance, you know, something about storm management goes up in there. Um, the other thing that I, now well, let's see, do we have? The other thing I'd, I'd like to see. I mean, if this, if, if this were, if, if this, this entire um, document or exercise should be about annual routine maintenance. And so if there is an element of emergency management, you know, that we got to spend so much time prepping the chainsaws or, or, or Trust gas me, in the generator. I know. <laughs> it, that's, that could be a part of it. But it also, you know, it could be up here in this highway maintenance because to me they're all kind of inclusive. The other thing that I'd like to see in here is a, a review of um, whether or not there's any automation that we can bring to this department if there's any efficiencies brought forward by but but that's a how um and i think true. thought this exercise was about the what you know, i really what want a book that, of work yeah what are the things that we're supposed to be doing what frequencies yeah um and then we could figure out you know are, where, where are there some potential efficiencies i'm i'm willing to send this back out because that was my initial thought uh, i felt uncomfortable only having one bid um and it could have just been a a sign of the times. So there's another there's another route we could go, which is to call McMahon, I guess McMahon and Associates or whatever they are, call them back in, and, and talk to them about where they think, you know, we could potentially economize, and and based on that feedback, you know, we could we could initially scratch these these two items that we talked about, which are ones they were, um, E and F, e and, F and, and and see what that what that produces, but then ask them for, you know, is there, is there any other places where it would be reasonable for us to save some money? And what are we giving up by doing that? Yeah, I mean, when, when you compare what this came in at, compared to Clinton, a much larger organization, came in at $43,000 for consultant services. This came in <clears> at forty. when we only Was had... it the same scope of work, though? Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. So they were looking at refuse management and all fleet management, that. all of it? Yeah. Uh, let's do both. Let me call in McMahon and Associates because that may help me yeah. help us refine that. And I'll invite you to that discussion with them. And then uh, let them know that we're going to rebid this potentially after we get their feedback. Um, can I ask again about the storm emergency management? How did that get on the list in the first place? Did you have concerns about it? No, Walt does that. That's So one of the concerns I do have is we have a retiring department. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure we understand that. Uh, I think it's important that whatever um, FEMA activities that is done is listed in the book of works because whomever takes over it's going to have to figure out how to do that. That's a significant amount of money that we that we get back. We could um, bring in a temp worker to sit with him over a period of time and ha just have him tell him what's happening and they can write it down and get it down on paper as a starting place for us to review. That might be a well, quick I'm a way temp to... worker, so I could probably Yeah, pass. there you go. You might, or, you know, just bring in a recorder. Uh, Bring a recorder and ask well, questions. Actually, all three of us are temp workers. That's yeah, awesome. right. You know, we're only uh, yeah. we're only here for as long as the uh, as the people want us here. So, anyways, all right. I think we're we're good with where we're going here. All right. Um, selectman's comments. Jamie, Lou? I'm good. I did have a comment about uh, two comments. One um, was about pickleball courts. I received a couple more questions this week, uh, in the last week or two about the pickleball courts and the status. I know we gave them 90 days. I haven't been in touch with Park and Rec directly. Um, I just want to bring to your attention that it came to me. I didn't see that you guys were copied on it, um, but there was a concern. And again, it's one person, two people making, um, sending me emails. Um, when I guess one on this particular issue, but um, the concern about the locations that are being considered, and I haven't gotten any more detailed information other than it was suggested that Bethke and Albert Field were both um, the locations that they're looking at, and um, this person represented that 
it would, would be maybe not ideal for seniors. I don't know, until we get more information, but do we know when the date certain is that we're gonna hear back from? We, uh, we gave them 90 days, and I've scheduled them to be included in our, the first meeting in November. Okay. And, and, and part, of that, part of that direction was they were supposed to do an outreach to the pickleball community um, you know, and my suggestion is that whoever this is, that, that, that you redirect them to, you know, that committee. It's, I did. I actually okay. suggest they get back in touch with Park and Rec and, and share their concerns. They really That's should be talking directly with Park yeah, and Rec. Yeah, I had, it's the first time I've heard back from them since it was sent over. Or from, I shouldn't say them, it was one person that sent a mm -hmm. message. And right now, yeah. Topic. Park and Rec has to sort out what they're doing with the, uh, the grant. The baseball money. Yes, and... That's that's a big deal, and that may include the pickleball course. It may not. I don't know. Um, but we got to put one foot in front of the other on that one. Um, the other issue I wanted to bring up was um, the beach. The um, I thought you did an excellent job at that town hall um, in a difficult situation. I thought you did an excellent job, and. Um, you, in meeting with the Beachwood folks, and um, I know that you and Senator uh, Representative Keel and lots of other politicians and other folks from town were in and out of Beachwood on a number of occasions. I was never there. I wasn't a huge proponent initially. Um, this is something that you worked with, a, a bipartisan issue that you worked on with Senator Keel and Senator Cohen and others to see it through and to meet the needs of the community with Beachwood, and um, kudos to you for doing that, Nancy. Well oh, done. Thank you. A um, couple of things um, from my person. Are you done? Mm -hmm. uh, the Charter Revision Commission continues to move forward on their charge. Uh, I have invited one of their members to provide an update to the BOS in October. Great. Um, updates to the town website are currently under review with the target date to launch the new site in October. Um, Are we going to get a, a preliminary look at that? Before I can give it to you. Yeah, we have. Uh, we can send you the the current what the current look what it currently looks like or the new version. Would it make sense for for us to to be walked through a presentation? We could do that. I can have. Yeah, Peg. I think we should. Yeah, I can have. Peg yeah, do I think that. we should. Okay. Um, there was a question about the priority of town hall versus the fire department. Um, in the funding from ARPA, the $200,000 for the design was put forth specifically for the town hall. So I wanted to make sure that we capitalized on those ARPA funds. In speaking with Rick Deeren, they're pretty pleased with the footprint, with the work that they've done before. They may have to revalidate from a cost perspective, but they were okay with that. Um, and, and thank you on the Fair Rent Commission. Just a couple of other things. I'm meeting with Melanie Yanis, who is a member of the Fair Rent Commission in Clinton. I'm meeting her Thursday for lunch, just to <coughs> chat, get some background, understand some of the challenges, you know, how, do they, how do they put people in charge of that committee? How does it work? What is the impact from a financial standpoint on the town? Uh, and I will say that um, we have at least one more um, email from a renter outside of the Beachwood community that may benefit from uh, a fair rent commission. So this is broader than and you know, once the word gets out there, that's the challenge you run into. Um, and, oh, uh, by the way, William Tong will be at um, the fire hall Thursday, 5.30, to speak with the Beachwood community. Uh, and if either, either of you want to go, I'll just make sure we put a special meeting up. I'm out of, it's this Thursday? Yeah. yeah I'm out of town, so... So if you're I'll let you know. I know I have it's something at seven o'clock. Okay. But all right. Um but if it's a town event, I don't think you have to list it just because we're both there. Yeah, yeah. If it was my meeting, then it would be different. Yeah, it's not your meeting, so okay. All right. Um real estate transactions. Uh, I move to go into executive session at seven forty five. <laughs> 